Text in Algebra 1, Lesson 96. Difference of two squares is our topic. Okay, this lesson is not difficult. It's quite simple. There's a little bit of uh, fussy distinction we're going to make at the beginning. Um, so bear with me through that part, but then when we get to the actual calculations, you'll be like, okay, this isn't hard. All right, we know that 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, that might seem really basic, but I want you to notice those are both positive. We also know that minus 2 times minus 2 equals 4, right? So we could say that the square root of 4 is 2 and minus 2, but we typically only focus on this. We say the square root of 4 is 2. If we're trying to specify that we want that negative 2, we usually indicate it like that. Right? We cover this up, we say the square root of 4 is 2, then we'd attach the minus sign. Right? This is the way we typically indicate that we want the negative root of that, okay? So, if we have a problem like this, we say that x equals 2 or negative 2 because both of those are true, but we wouldn't say that the square root of 4 equals plus or minus 2. We just, for reasons I can't really explain logically, because I mean it is true, but we just don't note it that way. We use different symbols to do it. Like, I, like we said up here, if you're trying to get at the negative root, you usually place a minus sign in front of that. So this, as John says in the book, is a no, no, no. Okay? We would not say it that way. We would say it this way. That's our happy place. Okay? In this topic that we're talking about today, the difference of two squares, if P and Q are real numbers, we say that P squared if P squared equals Q squared, then P equals Q and P equals minus Q. That is what we want to hold on to for our lessons today. All right? And what it does is it sidesteps us around some of this confusing notation and lets us just focus in on the answer. This is pretty theoretical. It's pretty crazy making at this point. Just remember what's in the bubble. All right? So, for our problems, and there are only three of them, and they're really fast, so buckle in. This isn't going to last long. P squared equals 16. All right? What we're saying is that the way we're going to write this is plus or minus 4. Right? This is the little shorthand symbol that we use that means plus and minus. We're recognizing that positive 4 times positive 4 equals 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 also equals 16. So this is our answer. Example 96.2, p squared equals 41. All right, wait a minute. 41 is not a perfect square, so how are we going to write that? Ready? p equals positive negative square root of 41. Oh, look at that. We don't know what that number is in a specific sense, but we can just write the square root of it in that form. Okay? So if it's a perfect square, we go ahead and write 
what the root is. If it's not a perfect square, we just write it with the symbol saying whatever that number is, that's what we want. And here's the last one. k squared equals 13. We take the square root of both sides. k equals, again, plus or minus square root of 13. We don't have to be specific. We can just write the idea of the number that way. That's it. Make sense? I'm looking at the practice problems. They follow this same format where practice problem A is a perfect square, but B and C are not. Remember that when we are taking the roots of a square like this as the solution to a, it, when we're solving a square, we can use the plus and minus sign. Okay? That other stuff that I told you about last time is kind of theoretical. Don't worry too much about that. If you understand this, you're golden. Okay, end of lesson 96. That's got to be the shortest lesson on record. Goodbye.